Hello, my name is Abha and I'm back again with a story from one of my favorite authors, Ruskin Bond, and this is called Koki's Song. When Koki was nearly 12, she and her mother went to spend part of the year with Koki's maternal grandmother, who lived in a lonely old house near the riverbed. Her mother was busy all day, cooking and washing clothes, while her grandmother, a round, bouncy little woman, would sit in the sun, recounting stories from her own childhood. Koki would spend the morning helping her mother and the afternoons talking to her grandmother. But towards evening, the old lady would go indoors, and then Koki would be on her own in the large garden. The garden had not been looked after too well, and it was overrun with semi-wild marigolds, nasturtiums, and roses. Koki liked it this way because she could wander about discovering flowers emerging from the tall grass and thistles. A wall went round this garden, and on the other side of the wall, there was a stretch of grassland that went sloping down to the riverbed. A shallow stream ran along the middle of this otherwise dry watercourse. During the monsoon rains, it was a rushing torrent, but just now, it was a murmuring brook with little silver fish darting about the water. Koki seldom went beyond the garden wall because across the riverbed was a jungle and wild animals frequently came down to the water to drink. The wild boar, who were often seen, frightened her. But once she saw a deer, quite close, moving about with supple grace and dignity. It was a cheetah, a spotted deer, Koki stared at the animal in fascination and the deer must have become conscious of her gaze for it looked up and stared right back at Koki. What the deer saw was a small dark face half hidden by a lot of loose black hair and two large brown eyes shining with wonder. The deer and the girl stared at each other for two or three minutes, and somewhere a twig snapped, and it startled the deer, and it went bounding away across the stream. One evening, Koki heard the distant music of a flute. She had not heard it before, and she looked over the wall to see where it came from. A boy sat near the stream, playing on a flute, while a small herd of cows grazed on the slope. He had a thin shawl over his shoulders, his feet were bare, and his clothes dusty and torn. But Koki did not notice these things. She was enthralled by the simple plaintive melody of the flute. And for her, the boy was a prince who made beautiful music. She climbed up the wall and sat there with her legs dangling over the other side. When the boy looked up and saw her, he rose and came nearer. He sat down on the grass about 20 meters from the wall, put the flute to his lips again, and with his eyes on Koki, continued his play. It reminded Koki of the day she and the deer had stared at each other, both fascinated, neither of them stirring or making a sound. Only now it was for a much longer time and one played while the other listened. Next evening, Koki heard the flute again and was soon sitting astride the wall. When the boy saw Koki, he put his flute down and smiled at her and then began playing again. That evening, Besides playing and listening, all they did was smile at each other. On the third evening, Koki asked the boy his name. So me, he said, and he played on the flute and did not say another word. But on the fourth evening, he asked Koki her name. 
and she told him. I will make a song about you, he said, and he played the sweetest melody Koki had ever heard. She found herself putting words to it and singing softly. When you are far away, I'll sing the song. And in my heart you play all summer long. After that, Somi always played Koki's song. It wasn't long before Koki came down from the wall and sometimes she and Somi would walk up the riverbed and paddle in the cold mountain water. They never said much to each other and yet a lot seemed to have been said. Somi would leave at dusk, herding the cattle before him, calling each by a different name and Koki would watch him go until he was a speck on the dusty road and the cowbells tinkled distantly. She never knew where he came from or where he went. She thought she might ask him someday, but, you know, it just didn't seem necessary. One day, Somi did not play the flute. Instead, he put it in Koki's hands and said, Keep it for me, for I'm going away for some time to the summer pastures in the hills. He had come without his herd that day. After he had given Koki the flute, he turned and ran, fleet-footed, across the grass that was now turning from green to brown. Koki missed the boy, but she still had the flute. She tried playing on it sometimes, but she did not have that magic touch and all she achieved was a shrill, broken piping. But sometimes, when she was walking by herself along the dry riverbed, she thought she heard the music, sweet and low, and all around her. She did not sing her song. She had made the words for Somi, and she would sing them for Somi when Somi had returned, if he ever returned. At night when she lay awake, the flute seemed to play her song. It was as though the flute was actually playing by itself. One day when Koki was by the riverbed, ankle deep in water, the flute fell from her hands. It was carried into the middle of the stream and swept away. Koki ran down the stream, splashing through the water, stumbling frequently and wetting her clothes. She could see the flute bobbing up and down on the water, but it was getting further and further away, and soon she had to stop running because she was tired and very far from home. The flute was lost, and she did not hear its music anymore. Koki became quiet and listless. Grandmother complained that she could no longer interest the girl in her stories. So Koki tried hard to listen and pay attention, but her mind was always wandering to other things. No one could guess the reason for Koki's unhappiness. Even Koki wasn't sure. She saw the deer once when it came to the stream to drink. Koki was sitting on the wall and the deer took one look at her and was so startled that it went bounding away into the forest. And so another month passed and the mountain snows melted and the swollen stream came rushing down the valley and past the lonely old house. The garden was full of little green shoots and the flame tree was bursting into color. Koki too had grown a little taller. She sat under a mango tree watching the sunlight stalk the shadows on the wall. A couple of bulbuls were twittering away in a rose bush. Grandmother had told Koki that birds sang because they were happy. But what proof was there of that? Koki wondered. For all she knew, birds could just as well be singing because they felt miserable. And then, as though accompanying the song of the birds, came the music of a flute. Koki heard it and looked up and listened. There was no mistaking the melody. It was Koki's song. 
She pulled herself up on the wall and looked over. Somi sat on the grass, playing a new flute, but looking as though he had been sitting there for ages. When he saw Koki, he put down his flute and smiled and then began playing again. That evening, they walked together down to the edge of the stream and she noticed that the herd was larger than before. Somi was wearing new clothes. He told her about the lush mountain meadow where he had taken the herd for the dry months. She told him that she would soon be returning to her school and her home in the nearby town. Will you come again? He asked. At the end of every month, she said. My grandmother says I must come. But she knew that wasn't the only reason. I'll be here, said Somi, simply, and played Goofy's song.